Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a really nice functional equation. I think I saw this problem on the internet and I just fell in love with the problem and I wanted to share with you as soon as I can. So here's the problem. We have f of xy equals f of x divided by y. And we're also given that f of 2 plus f of 4 is equal to 6. By the way, I saw the original equation, but the second piece I made up to make it a little bit more fun. And we're supposed to find f of 8. So I'll be presenting two methods. And please let me know which method you like better. And obviously one method is longer than the other, but let me know which one is your favorite. Let's get started. First method. So for my first method, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set some values. So since I I'm dealing with f of 2 and f of 4, I'd like to replace x and y with 2. So doesn't that make sense? So we have f of xy equals f of x over y. By the way, with the second method, we're going to find what actually f of x uh, or how f of x can be expressed as in terms of x, which is going to be more fun. So what kind of function are we looking at? So here I'm going to replace x with 2 and y with 2. If you do that, we're going to get f of 2 times 2. By the way, I forgot to say, but this equation is true for all x and y values, but 0 is an exception. And also, you can multiply both sides by y if you want, but that's not necessary. Anyways, they're both 2, so f of 2 times 2 is equal to f of 2 divided by 2. But what is f of 2 times 2? What is 2 times? It's like, come on, you know this, right? f of 4, that is f of 4, yeah f of 4 equals f of 2 divided by 2. What does that mean? It just means that if you cross multiply, f of 2 becomes 2 times f of 4. So whatever f of 4 is, f of 2 is just going to be twice the value. But guess what? We were given an equation that kind of puts them together. So we know f of 2 plus f of 4 is equal to 6. Now I can go ahead and replace f of 2 with this. So that is 2 f of 4 plus f of 4 equals 6 and 2 apples plus 1 apple that's 3 apples equals 6 and then from here f of 4 is just going to be 2 if you divide both sides by 3. So I was able to find the value of f of 4 but I wasn't looking for it but that doesn't matter hold on calm down you're going to need it. Okay do I need to find f of 2 as well? Yeah it would be nice I mean you don't have to but let's find it. So how do you find f of 2 from here? Remember, or it's just right here, right? f of 2 is 2 times f of 4, so f of 2 is just going to be 4. So it's kind of like an interesting function, f of 4 is 2, f of 2 is 4. They kind of switch around. That should give you an idea. You know, it all starts with some hypothesis. hypothesis. It doesn't have to be true, and then you just test it, and hopefully um, you'll get it. You'll get, the, uh, you'll get there. So... What are we looking for? I lost track. Okay, f of 8. Yay. So let's write the original problem one more time. f of xy equals f of x over y. And I'm looking for f of 8. But I got these two values, which is helpful. So should I multiply them together? Like since I have the 4 and the 2? Yeah, I guess. I mean, 4 times 2 is going to give you 8, and you're looking for f of 8. So that should help. So I can write it as f of 4 times 2 equals f of 4 divided by 2. Great, what does this mean? This means f of 8 is half of f of 4, but f of 4 is 2, so it's 2 divided by 2, which is 1. Okay, but why did you write? I know some people are always going to complain, and that's perfectly fine. And you can complain. I'm not complaining about your complaining. You can always complain. You have the right to complain. Okay, so use it. But anyway, so here's what I'm trying to say. Uh, some people might say, why didn't you use 2 times 4? Is there a difference? Let's see f of 2 times 4. Okay, so you got to be careful because now you're changing the x and y values. Can they switch around? That's a good question, but let's just stick with the definition. f of 2 times 4 is going to be based on this, right? f of 2 divided by 4. Uh-oh, I have an f of 4 here, but I have an f of 2 here. Hmm, they seem to be different, but don't worry. You still get f of 8 on the left, and on the right, you are using f of 2, which is 4, and dividing it by 4 and getting 1 again. Wow, I'm surprised. No, you shouldn't be. Because you should always get the same answer. Otherwise, this is going to be inconsistent. So the answer is 1. So what? 
Okay, great. That was the first method, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. But hopefully you get the idea, even when I switch the numbers around, it would work. So one thing for you to explore is, is uh, f of xy the same thing as f of yx? Well, duh, because x times y is equal to yx. So if two values are equal, then their images, is that called an image? Or outputs are also equal. So if like a equals b, then f of a equals f of b. This is always true, right, for functions. This is the well-definedness. I don't know, maybe there's another word. So you can explore that. Anyways, I'm just going to show you the second method. This was the first, right? Okay, sometimes I switch them around and I confuse myself, but I think this time I didn't, so this is the second method. So, the second method, and what's the original equation? I don't know, if you have time at the end, we can also explore a little bit what's going to happen if we switch to x and y, but you notice with numerical values, it gives you the same thing. So it should always work, right? Okay, check it out. Now, my second method is based upon finding an expression for the function. So that's kind of a cooler method in my opinion, but don't be biased. So I'm going to set, since I have the freedom, right? I mean, you can set x and y equal to pretty much anything as long as you're in the domain. y equals zero is out of bounds, but anything else I think, I could be wrong, uh, you can replace x and y with. That's what's cool about functional equations. You can experiment, you can use zero. Obviously, if zero is allowable, then you should use it because f of zero is valuable in functional equations. Anyways, uh, again, I talked to my soul, I should get back to work. Set x equal to one. Now, you might be questioning like, why? Exactly, that's the answer. Why? I want to get f of y from here. That's why I do that. So x is 1, so the numerator is going to give me f of 1 divided by y. Notice that y stays as y, x is replaced. So what is so cool about this equation is that f of 1 is a constant. Yay! So, and what do we use for constants? Okay, no, c. Okay, we're going to use c. Hopefully you see what I see, and we can write f of y as c over y. So I replace f of 1 with c, don't worry about it, we'll take care of that later. So, I mean, if you want to find f of 1, you can replace x and y with 1, that's going to give you f of 1 equals f of 1, it's not going to help at all. Anyways, so what do we know? We know that f of 2 plus f of 4 is equal to 6. 2 plus 4 equals 6, and f of 2 plus f of 4 is equal to 6, isn't that cool? Now, let's go ahead and use this definition. What is f of 2? c over 2. What is f of 4? c over 4. And there's some 6. Oh, come on. This is like a linear equation. You, lear you learned this one, like 7th grade? Whatever. Make a common denominator. 3c over 4 is equal to 6. I like to cross cancel. Allow me to do it. And from here you get c equals 8. Does that look familiar? Hopefully. And if c is equal to 8, I can go back here and plug in 8. So f of y is equal to 8 c over y, so 8 over y. But I don't like functions expressed in y, I'm just going to replace y with x. But some people are going to be confused, so let's forget about it. Okay, leave it like this, that's fine. Okay, y doesn't have to be f of x. So what am I sp supposed to find? f of 8, so f of 8 is going to be 8 divided by 8, which is 1. And we get the exact same answer. Do you think f of xy equals f of yx, or can you prove it? I'm going to leave that question open. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.